right, let's get this together. Got a lot to talk about. Um, every time I do it this way, it's a little, a little extra. Just waiting to see who shows up. See what happens. Okay. Hmm. We are just waiting to see for people to come on. <sighs> Don't want to talk to the air. We got a lot to um, talk about a lot has happened today. Uh, There's going to be a news broadcast. Um, and I would like to talk to you all about that. And just uh, looking at some things, just making sure my notes are straight. And then I'll get you all updated on things. Let me see. Um, uh, let me see. Let me see. Just checking on some stuff. Okay, let me know if you're out there. Put a note in the comment. In the comment section. Let's see. Wait for a few. I know there's so many things happening today. Um, in about half an hour, we've got a, a few of my colleagues who are also running for office. They're going to be doing some fundraising events. Um, I know I have something I have to get on for working families party, um, a little Zoom conference thing for that. Uh, so, I just want to get to it. If you're not watching this live, thank you for watching the recording. I am going to get started because I have a lot of things to talk about, and as always, and um, some updates on COVID and um, things that we're going to be doing the next couple of days and even the next couple of weeks. Let me take off my glasses. I keep forgetting that that is definitely um, actually, let me push it this way. It's a mirror image. Um, always a glare. Okay. So today was our great masks, uh, mask uh, distribution over in Hamilton Hill in Schenectady, thanks to Saratoga Sews and a few other sewing groups and um, volunteers, thanks to William Brevis and Coco House. Um, we were able actually to, um, to serve, I think we had 75 families who registered, pre-registered for masks, and we handed out over a hundred masks um, to people in need. And it, it felt really good because a lot of people came up and they were like, oh, okay, I think I only need two or whatever. And when they wrote their number down on the form and I said, is that all you need? Are you sure that's, that's all you need? And then they looked at me and said, we can have more. And I said, you can have as many as you think you need. That's why we're here. If you have a need, that's what we're here for. So a lot of people were really shocked that we were like, go ahead, take it. If you need it, take it. Um, and those families who actually need it did take advantage of it. Those who said, no, we only need three. They only needed three and they went on about their way. And I said, please let your neighbors and everyone know that um, we're gonna be here for the next couple hours. I think we ended uh, to my daughter's chagrin, um, my youngest. Um, I think we ended at like a little after three o'clock and um, it was, we told everyone that they needed to uh, just let their neighbors know that we're there. And if they need to register, we have the forms here and they can fill out forms. We tried our best to make sure we had social distancing, had to redirect a few people. Hand sanitizer was in use profusely, mostly because that's me. Um, and of course it's needed. And uh, the news was there, um, the newspaper, 
photographers and everyone was there to see us, uh, mostly William Rivas of Coco House in Schenectady, helping once again to serve his community. And I just asked him if, if I could um, help out as well with these masks. So um, it, I actually got the idea of, of uh, doing this from seeing what he was doing in the community. And I said, he is serving a need and I know there are needs. And then when I had seen Saratoga Sows doing what they were doing in Saratoga, I called and asked them if they had a capacity to actually give masks over to people who are in need here in Schenectady and they, they jumped right on it. It was um, really amazing. I felt really good. I think it was on cloud nine um, leaving because the faces of people are like, what? We don't have to do anything? No, Just if you need masks, you need. Uh, people were like, I need eight, is that okay? If that's what you need, fine. I think one family needed 15. Uh, there was two families combined, so you needed 15 masks. And even then she's like, I'm not even sure if I'm getting everyone. I said, it's fine, if you need more, let William know. Um, take a picture of the form so you have our number and our contact information and you can definitely call us and we'll come and get some. A few families could not make it. So I, when we were done at a little after three, we started at like um, a little a little bit after one. When we were done, uh, my daughters and I hopped in the car and we drove to four different families' houses and dropped off some, actually I think we drove to someone's job. And then we drove to a couple of other houses, um, some, some out of the way. And they were really shocked at the fact that we came. I, they mentioned that they could not come to pick it up and they needed it dropped off. So we went and we dropped off some masks. Doing things like that really, it makes me feel like I'm doing something instead of just sitting here and, and just saying, guess what's happening this, what happened this week with COVID. That's all well and good, but not everybody has access to the internet and the information on the internet. And no one, and not everyone has the luxury right now. I mean, it's not a luxury, but unfortunately, the majority of us are stuck in the house or we're laid off or, you know, furloughed um, during this pandemic. So, you know, this is what we're doing. We're in front of our computers, we're in front of our TVs, our phones, and this is what we're doing. But not everybody can do that. And I don't feel uh, like I'm doing enough when I'm doing this. I, I do love the fact that I have the privilege to speak to you guys on the internet and do this, but I am a hands-on person. I have to get out and I have to like physically do a thing. And a lot of you know this, you've seen me in the past, you've seen, you've seen how I get into it. And um, it, it felt really, really amazing and great to be able to help people. And, and, and then also um, get people to understand that this is not, this was not about politics. This was really about fulfilling a need for the people um, that are always the last to be helped. Like how much longer do we need to wait for, for our underserved communities to get the protection that they need? They are our essential workers, the majority of them. And not everyone has access to personal protective equipment like masks. So why are we waiting? to help them, we should be doing it. And I really enjoyed doing it. Uh, so I just want to say that we had a great turnout. It felt good to be out there, it felt good to be serving, it felt good to be driving around and stuck in this house for over five weeks um, and really getting out there and accessing the people. It was a little scary um, because I am um, high risk for this virus because I'm an asthmatic, but um, I pushed past that and I made sure that everyone that we encountered, we were calling people over, do you need masks, do you need masks? And they were like, huh? And I was like, come, come get some masks and having people sign up. So um, I wanted to show you, let me, oh, we have this, these are forms, look at, there's like so many here. I don't know how many we have. Oh, barely fit on the clipboard, but. We have so many families, and this is not including the list that we have electronically. <sighs> it's just, it was just an amazing um, event today. Not event, it was an amazing encounter and um, loved it. All right, so to 
Um, just looking at my notes, making sure I said everything I need to say before we go to COVID. Um, yeah, during my uh, delivery today, I actually found more people in need through one woman. And uh, she said, I know a lot of people who actually need and um, would you be able to leave me with some so that I can do that? And I said, do you know exactly who needs it? And she said, no. And I said, well, the way that they're, we had them packaged like sanitarily. So I said, this is what we'll do. We take the form, have them fill it out. So we know exactly how many masks we need and families we need to serve. Then I will come and personally give them to them. And she was like, really? I was like, yeah, you don't need to stress yourself out over logistics or anything. All you need to do is make sure that we know who we need to give it to. So um, I really felt good that that we found out more people who were in need and we are able to help. All right. So that being said, let's get to some COVID-19 updates. I think I see someone in the comments. Hey, Ed, if you need help drop doing drop offs, let me I will. You know what? You know how I get Ed? I'm t I totally get tunnel vision when I'm doing things like this because I'm like, what do we have to do? Let's do it. And I often forget to ask people like you for help. So please harass my phone, text me, message me and say, when are you doing it? I'll let you know when we, I think we're gonna do next Sunday and um, just harass me and make sure that I remember to, to ask you for help because I'm often like, boom, and I grab my kids, you know, I got my starting five, grab them and we we go and do. Um, I know someone else, I was like, oh my gosh, I totally forgot to call her and say that we were doing this. She had it all worked out. She's like, we're gonna do this, we're gonna do this, we're gonna do this. Yes, Daryl, I know I'm gonna call you next time so you can help and I do apologize. I just, I get so wrapped up in doing things, but I will, Ed, and um, you, you're gonna love it too. Okay, so um, COVID-19 this week. Um, I wanna start out with saying that two things stuck out this week. That was um, the, the, the new disease, I guess, or I guess it's a reaction to the COVID virus that children are having and it's causing Kawasaki's disease and then some respiratory distress. Um, I know at last week I started hearing about some children getting sick and mostly in, in, um, in New York City and I know my son years ago had Kawasaki's because he had a severe allergic reaction, um, anaphylaxis on top of, and I think that just sparked the Kawasaki's was what he was, his body was fighting so hard to, to, to get rid of the, the um, thing that he was allergic to. And then he, on top of that, he, Kawasaki's just jumped right in there. Um, and, and it is, that is something. Um, I thought they were talking about, um, now I've worked in the medical field for, for a while and, and I don't even know why I, I had never encountered that, I guess, cause I was, I don't know. I just had never counted that probably because we never really dealt with pedi pediatrics. But, um, when I, when we encountered that, I was really surprised and shocked at that disease. It's, it's very uncomfortable for the children, um, and um, that is a thing that's going on. And it, it kind of perked my ears up. I was like, oh my gosh, are you kidding me? Um, and also, um, I guess maybe three things. Uh, men are being affected more, and I think I mentioned this yesterday, by this virus than women. And also the numbers for people who, are, who have been tested, who have tested positive, 66% of them are from or home, have been home. And I know the governor said he's he's trying to figure out why that is. And um, my, my communications guy and I, we were talking about it and I said, um, I know I'm driving past some of my elderly retired friends and neighbors and I'm seeing them this close to their friends and families who are coming to visit. And I'm like, oh, guess what? They don't have masks on. I will not say their names. <laughs> They know who they are and uh, driving by my my daughters in the car. And it's really weird because my daughters are like, they don't have a mask on. They don't have a mask on. Mommy, why don't they have a mask? You should say something. And I tell them I'm not the police or sheriff. So, I mean, I can say something, but it might start an argument or a fight. But I'm just saying, um, if you're going to visit, 
your friends and family, please wear a mask, use hand sanitizer, um, try not to touch everything when you're visiting and stay six feet or more apart. You can say hi from afar, you know, I mean, it's just, oh my gosh, I know the governor's tired of telling us to do this, wear a mask, please. Just don't get people sick, they're home and they're like, how did I get sick? And it also, we were talking about um, just not visiting friends or having friends visit, um, cause understand you and your friends are not immune to this. Um, everyone's susceptible, some more than others, but it could also be going to the store and maybe walking into somebody's cough cloud or something like that, or touching a surface and then touching your face while you have your gloves on. You have your gloves on for a reason. Don't take out your cell phone and then talk on the phone with your gloves and the cell phone all day. Don't do it. Um, I think yesterday, if you notice, I was kind of doing this the whole time because my daughters thought they were going to the store while I was doing live. So I, I made them stop. Um, but my daughter was taking her phone with her. I said, if you're going outside, and you're going to take your cell phone with you, do not take your cell phone out when you're in the store. Wait until you come back home, you wash your hands, and then you can take your cell phone out. And if you're going to wear gloves, do not touch every single surface. Only if you need to grab something off the shelves, and then you come back, of course, I tell them they have to wash down all of their snacks and stuff that they, they've gotten. Um, take it out of the container if need be, and wash their hands. Um, before they start eating their snacks. So we're like being really extra careful. We're all asthmatic, so we have to. But not everyone's thinking that way. Um, working in um, in a high-risk section of the hospital and uh, working, in, uh, working with universal precautions, I am just hyper aware of germ transference and all that. So, and then I have issues anyway, slightly germophobic. So I think about this, but not us, not everyone, not every day. So you got to be careful. That's a high number. That's more so than, than, than the number of people who have tested positive and passed away in the nursing home. So um, we got to be careful, just be extra careful. It's really shocking to see that people who are staying home or are getting sick and testing positive. Um, so the, those were the, the three things that, that really stood out. Men, I think it's, I don't know. I don't want to say it's because like you're being manly. I have absolutely no idea. I've, I flipped it up in sideways and backwards and tried to figure out what could it be. Um, I'm thinking mostly maybe because men do more physical work. No, no, because that's not true. I don't know. I don't know. Just please be careful. Um, and my team is putting up some totals. Uh, so what happened today? Um, moratorium for rent and mortgage has been extended until August 20th. Uh, so that means that no one can be evicted. And also the governor said that um, landlords, and I think this was probably, some people may have already taken advantage of this for last month, but if you've paid a, uh, um, a security deposit, you can request your landlord to use the security deposit to cover your monthly rent. So um, you could ask that. And some people have to do a month in advance and then another month or last month or whatever. I can't really remember how it is, but, uh, and that may be two months or two months and a half, and that would cover your rent for the last couple of months. Now your landlord may say you may not be you may not be able to do that. You have it have every right to ask them why not. And I would su suspect that landlords um, who take that security deposit usually use it on other investment properties or maybe to make repairs, and they're not necessarily putting it in an escrow account, which you should be doing. If if your tenant gives you uh, um, Rent, I mean, security deposit, it should be set aside and there should be a record of that tenant's security deposit. And then you can transfer those funds over to the rent account and count that for their monthly rent, um, however, which way you have it set up. But those those um, landlords who probably say that they can't ask them if they still have the security deposit, they may not have it. But guess what? That's not your problem because you paid it. So just saying, um, and there may be some other stuff in there that I'm not aware of. 
Uh, so ask questions and research and talk to people, ask. So I don't know what I don't know, but uh, just going off of logic and my experience renting, the your security deposit should be there. So you can definitely use that to pay the rent um, or the rents that you've missed in the last month or two. Um, I said children getting sick, number of people. JetBlue, JetBlue has given out um, $100,000 worth of round trip tickets to medical professionals in New York City. I wanna say New York State, but I think it's just in the city. And that's 10,000 medical professionals have been given round trip tickets uh, to thank them for their service during this pandemic. I think that's awesome. I wonder what the other um, airlines are doing. I do know that the airlines have reduced tickets. I've seen tickets for like $12, but I'm not sure if I'm crazy enough to get on a plane or crazy enough to get on the plane during these times. Yeah, I've got issues with planes. So if you are brave enough to get on a plane and go travel, I'm not even gonna suggest that, but I don't know. See if you can push your travel out maybe to next year and still pay those ticket prices. Hopefully, fingers and toes. Um, the governor said also that, P, that hospitals need to have at least a 90 day supply of PPE, uh, um, uh, excuse me, PPE, it, that's redundant, personal protective equipment on hand. That makes sense. Uh, whenever you're doing a budget or setting up for life, there's all there. You're always told you need to have, you need to plan three months out. So um, I don't know if this is a, a no brainer for hospitals, but um, I'm not even sure if that's possible right now, being that we were struggling for PPE equipment just three weeks ago. So we'll see how that goes. A few more things because it's coming close to the next hour and I know we all have to go and you're so tired of hearing me talk. Um, hopefully you're not. Two more things. Um, one is I'm very confused at the fact that Andrew Yang, uh, former presidential candidate um, and Naipan, had worked so hard to fight for our democratic right to vote during the presidential primaries here in New York State, and they got those reinstated by suing the Board of Elections in New York State, that our Attorney General, awesome woman, Tish James, has put in an appeal for this, and that's going to hold up everything. I'm just so confused. I mean, I have an idea of why I think she did it, but it's not a happy thought. And I mean, if you think you know, you understand, you can put it in the comment section. I, I wanna keep hope and faith. Why? 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 Just, <sighs> yeah. All right, so the last thing, um, like I said, at, top of this half hour, we had an awesome time helping those in need um, out, out in front of Cocoa House and Schenectady, handing out masks to families, friends and neighbors who need masks, some really good quality masks. Um, I thought I had mine here. I guess I did not bring it over here, but um, I wanted to show you. I think I'll take a picture and put it um, up, but um, really good quality masks. And uh, we had the news there, and I know there was a news broadcast around four o'clock or something, or WNYT, uh, the Gazette was there. They did not ask me about the masks. They asked me something about campaigns, and I said, why aren't we talking about the masks? Um, but they're doing some other story stuff, so we'll see if that comes out. But um, I really, really want to talk about the masks and not so much my campaign, just the need. Um, so we can call on other people to actually help. Um, so I did, I kind of squeezed it in there, but I do thank Pete DeMola from the Gazette for being there and 
and and um, interviewing William and other people and our volunteers that were there and William's volunteers that were there helping out. Uh, so uh, I think Paul, my campaign, I mean my campaign um, director, he's not my campaign director, my communications director, uh, press secretary, he is going to post the link to the video so you can see the news um, video of everything that we had done um, and I hope that maybe you can help out with handing out um, masks or calling people and, and giving them updates on what's going on, vital information that's important for them during this pandemic. The next time we talk, uh, you see my face is going to be tomorrow. We're going to have a special broadcast. That, okay, I lied. More than one more thing. We're going to talk to uh, Dr. Sonia Sidhu Izu. Izzo, sorry. Um, she is a local doctor who has been on the front lines and I'm hoping that all our nurse friends and all our other uh, medical professionals and other people will join us on our Zoom live, Zoom slash Facebook live tomorrow at 6.30. It's gonna be a really important conversation to have. And if you wanna help out, uh, if you need more information, you're not sure what's left or right up and down, uh, shoot us an email at Teresa for Senate at gmail.com Teresa for Senate at gmail.com. It took me a whole 30 minutes to say, um, if you want to, um, join up and volunteer, make calls, write letters, um, help us raise some funds, Teresa for Senate, uh, dot com or Teresa for Senate at gmail.com. Either way you can email us or you can visit the website and look at all the awesome things we've been doing during this pandemic to help our neighbors and our friends in the district. And um, just please, we, we need as many volunteers as possible to make sure that we win this primary and move on to the general in November. The primary is June 23rd. And we need people to know about um, absentee ballot voting and um, their rights and what's going on with the presidential elections. Uh, give me uh, a shout out or send me an email at Teresa for Senate at gmail.com, Teresa for Senate at gmail.com, or go join us, sign up at the website, Teresa for Senate.com. Um, I have my Star Wars because I was feeling like a Jedi. So, everyone, stay healthy, stay safe, and as always, drink tea.